think it might finally be time to roll the dice again, dare I say. Which, among other things, means I have to desperately go around the room grabbing all the crap. I wasn't prepared. Alright, dice roll. That's a four. What does a four mean? My headphones back on? I did not have my stuff pre-collected to do this. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Four is the zone that doesn't exist, which means the... It's the one that the, match, the number matches up with is the Tower of Latria. Time to take this off my checklist then. And then from here on out when I roll the dice, uh... I guess one through three will be Boletaria and four, five, and six will all be the Valley of Defilement. Because three zones will be completed and one of them doesn't ever exist in the first place. Yeah! How This is gonna be interesting. I'm trying to think of the enemy that you encounter in this scenario and it's actually like a... An odd matchup to deal with with this weapon, but it might be over very quickly, or it might go horribly. And the dumbest hat award goes to... This is one of those boss fights that they can't let go of. They just love the idea of it too much, so they keep using it over and over again, which is the idea of a... a mandatory boss fight in the story that is itself a PvP matchmaking thing, where the fight itself is actually you fighting a PvP enemy more so than an actual boss. The most, the most faithful copy they bring up later in the franchise is the Dark Souls 3 DLC, where there's, there's a boss that just, it just summons a dude for you to fight that's a, pl that's a player. Much like this one. And so, and so they have you, they have you, they have you go up this long staircase and watch what I think is, I think that cutscene's even mandatory and you have to watch it every time or something. And you go up this long staircase and all this other stuff's happening because they're, they, if you're connected to the internet and this game is still popular, which neither is really true right now, uh, it's doing matchmaking right now to try to desperately search for somebody for you to fight against because if it can't and if it can't fight find anyone you'll just fight an NPC instead and to punish you for charging forward they put this guy here which is an enemy that you inherently are supposed to not charge because it's dangerous to do so ah. <clears throat> I tried to do an overhead well shit that wasn't very nice sir That was close. So they filled this hallway with all sorts of nasties just to try to make sure they have time to match make. Because they're trying to it tries to find a player for you to fight. And they did the same thing in Dark Souls 3, but they did it by having a, a speech that plays. The guy has a conversa the guy does a monologue that you can't skip. And while that monologuing is happening, it's matchmaking the, uh, PvP encounter. Then you have the Looking Glass Knight, which... Or, is it Looking Glass Knight or Mirror Knight? I forget. 
But specifically, they have an enemy. Hey there. Nope. No grabbing me. Oh, come on. That's a questionable hitbox at best. There we go. Yeah, they're a lot harder to fight when they're facing you. You can see why I've been sneaking up behind them. But the uh, Looking Glass Knight is act was actually a genuine boss fight, so he was a weird one. Because he was a genuine boss fight, but he would summon this phantom during the fight. And he had to do with deal with both of them at the same time. So as a result, I couldn't make him too hard of a boss, because he had maybe would be fighting a PvP encounter. But I played Dark Souls... If I remember correctly, I played Dark Souls 2 when it was new and popular. And I did the same thing for the expansion, and I've played multiple versions of Dark Souls 2 now. And I don't think I've ever had a fight with the Looking Glass Knight, even during the height of popularity, where an actual player got uh, summoned for the invasion, and I actually ended up fighting a player during it. I don't think I've ever experienced that a single time, which is weird, because I've done four-plus playthroughs of that game. Actually, probably like six or seven. You alright, buddy? Just walk it off, right? Just walk it off. It's fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh We're done here. And like every asshole pvp or he's got that damn homing... that He's got that homing soul mass spell. Where the little things are hovering over your shoulders and randomly home in on pe on the uh, on your opponent and and spike them every now and then. I've done it too. It's an incredibly effective spell for PvP because it just it. it this, is a, this is a whole game about one-on-one -on -one encounters and careful like evasion and timing. So having a weird secondary spell that shoots out anywhere between one and five times and nobody's directly controlling it and it just it gets you in the moment and also hits you with an element you're probably not resistant to is like shockingly effective. A cool room. Very Castlevania-y. Very Castlevania-y. I'm not entirely sure if it even matches up with the... I'm not sure if this room even matches up with the theming of this environment until now. Like, the first two parts of Latria feel cohesive and like a progression. I don't know if this one felt like a logical progression or not. Is he supposed to be an old one or something? And the Tower of Chairs is strange. Huh. There's also something really the 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 the, the bizarre turban hat is also like really oddly funny compared to the tone of this world until now. It's a an interesting direction to take things in, I suppose. Hey Ostrava. How you doing? I've got 40,000 souls. Dang. Let's get me some levels. Also, maybe some of these. Uh, maybe not yet. Let's see if I... how close we are. Yeah, no. We're not gonna be able to make up that with what's left. I keep the nope. Thought so that maybe me going pure dark might have some kind of dialogue re reaction, but nope. I might just consume all of these demons' souls, since I'm apparently all in on that at the, at the moment. Of being a mega-powerful dude that just consumes anything around them for power, so maybe I should just be consuming all the boss souls and going and fully you have a heart embracing that. You have a heart of gold. Which is why he apparently didn't have line of sight when I murdered everyone else that's not in his current line of sight. Oh boy, he, wait, I, everyone could see me do that though. Um, uh, well, it's Patches. He's probably like, yes, you have a heart of gold. You got rid of that ruffian. Yeah, I do suspiciously kill all of the casters off camera behind stuff where nobody else can see it, but they presumably hear it. But patches, I just, I just like long live the king right off the ledge, and nobody seems to care. Oh, patches. All right, next dice roll. So, one, two, and three, Boletaria. Three, four, uh, four, five, and six, Valley of Defilement. I'm surprised I haven't rolled. Boletaria a single time since I did the Archdemon, which allows you to actually go there again. That's a three. That is a three. I'm going to Boletaria then. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting with this weapon. Oh, man. Alright. We'll see how it goes. It's also really convenient that I'm going to Boletaria. I want to go get Bjor. Obviously. 
Ooh, if I kill Bior early enough, then I'll have a proper solo fight against a against the penetrator, and we, I might pay the price for that because <laughs> he he that might be a hard fight. I don't know, or there might be no hard fights in all of Demon Souls. That might be true too. I don't know. This is gonna be this this run's gonna be my first uh, proper experience with my modern uh, skill set with this game against penetrator and. False King Allant, and I, I don't know how I'll fare. It's it's kind of interesting, but historically, whenever, oop, whenever I go back to an old Souls game and fight something that I previously thought, really thought of as being as incredibly hard, I, I then go back and I'm like, ah, this isn't such a big deal. This dick again. Just go get him. He's right there. He's not even. He's not even fast. Oh, dang it! That prick. All right. Hey, he's been just. He's just been waiting here all game, because <laughs> he sicked the tower knight on us in the second level I played. But then you have to get that gate open via the arch. The uh, defeating an arch demon. And then he's just here. To, he's just politely waiting here to taunt us when we finally arrive. I kind of wish that there weren't any other versions of that guy anywhere else in the game, because he shows up in chapter in a uh, Stonefang tunnel and stuff like that. But I kind of wish that he was only here, just so he it felt like you could tell it was a singular enemy to really properly make a nemesis out of him. Hey, uh, angry dogs! How you doing? You're basically the nemesis of anyone using a nice. Oh, those dogs aren't in cages. <laughs> uh, dogs are just your nemesis when you use a slow weapon. They're so fast. And they gave these ones face spikes. That wasn't a very nice thing to do. Ow. Ow. Anyone else? Stop moving. Are you invulnerable? I forget. Yeah. Oh, they got orange glowy eyes. These poor... They, From Software likes to make, f like, weird mangy, like, cursed, glowy-eyed nightmare dogs. That's just a thing they, they fixated on. On top of PvP fights and all these other things they've done. Late moon grass. It appears to be locked. Yeah, we got a few tasks to go on here. Much like Latria, Boletari always feel like one of the places where they have a lot of attention and put into the zone. And usually there's- and then here in particular, there's, there's like a bunch of quest chains going on and different weird interactions that are all important. Ah! No thank you. No thank you. Oh Jesus, that was a uh, good for the frame rate, that one. Alright. How'd you, how'd you light the metal balls on fire? That's interesting. Oh, get him, 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 get him. Oh. This slow prick keeps escaping via the power of cutscenes. God damn it. Minor attack right now, I heard a thing. He's not even- he's nowhere fast enough to escape. But he just keeps doing it. And murdering his own friends. His friends that have like... That drop these stones that look like a pair of lungs, basically? Eh, not- no, oh no, it's a. Uh, it's clearly like these guitar picks right here, but cracked and green. Huh. When I just glance at it, I always think it's like a pair of lungs. Which is often a symbol used to represent some kind of fi vitality. Ah! Hey, you. Get it out. Boy, are you making a mistake right now. Maybe you should learn by example and fuck off. After, like, that guy did just... Alright, well. 
Well, <laughs> anyway, see you guys later. Hope you guys, hope it was worth the trip for you guys. Oh, crap. They're intentionally putting a, a narrow place near some spear dudes again. Oh, no. Mine's bigger, apparently. It's a really important distinction to, to learn. Just funny, because you're what, yours is, you're silly, dumb soldier guy using a realistic weapon designed for reach and what it would actually look like versus my big dumb anime sword that's definitely not designed how you design a sword for reach but also not how you design a sword for anything because fuck it hi that's how you come i saw you coming <laughs> you're not very stealthy as it turns out mr secret throwing dagger man <laughs> Oh, I love the little slapstick of uh, blindsiding him. That's great. That's a great moment. More grass. I need to, I need to savor every bit of grass I can get because my supplier is dead. I turned him into a colorless demon soul so I could do like 20 more damage with a super swing. Probably worth it. It's also always cathartic to kill Patches, even if we're oddly charmed by his relentless antics of shamelessly doing the same thing in every game, and as if the players won't catch on. Not that he knows that. Ow! I thought I was behind a wall. That didn't work out. That wasn't very nice of you. Can I walk over this cliff? Yep. you stop doing that? Thank you. Thank you kindly. Hmm. I think, I, wow, what a nice day we have here. Seems like the coast is entirely clear. <laughs> oh shit, I, I almost didn't make it. <laughs> and so it is. All right, you got a secondary plan? Ow! Invisible, dude. See, you're better at this than your other friend. Ow, you are- Wow, look at you. Things are working out for you. You doing a- You doing a- You doing a shinobi pose? You doing a- You doing a pose? Are you opposed to me going up these stairs? Hmm? Go! Oh. God damn narrow hallways. Uh oh. Thought I hit him. There we go. Not making this easy on me. It's almost like this is an impractical weapon. Although I'm it's proving practical, honestly. Hello, sir. He's supposed to be shooting at me in that zone, but I didn't take the path that actually aggroes him. So he just didn't do anything. He missed his chance completely. There we go. Interesting how I can't even complete my swing because there's no room for the arc, and yet I'm also simultaneously magically uh, killing them. It's simultaneously a failed swing and a killing blow, which raises questions. It's really important to play these games with the headphones on. There's so many ambush moments that are totally given away by hearing the dude spawn behind you, basically. Hey guys, you guys gonna ambush me? This guy really is like one of the top 10 vil ow, villains in a Souls game. Just because just of how he antagonizes you. And then you run for cover and all the places you can run for cover too feature a big bad dude you don't want to deal with. Ow. 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 You can stop blocking, please. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. Did not expect that to one-shot him at all. Hey there. Oh, that was a miss. There we go. Nice of you to wait there for me. There was another one of you? There was another dude in the room? 
You gotta work on your reaction times. Which is terrible advice to give to a dead person, because they're dead now. <laughs> that's really my MO. Life advice, to, life advice for dead people. Hey! I didn't have to kill you. I was thinking about it. You were, you were actually next on my list, but I didn't have to kill you, so I get to meet you here. Ah, we meet again. Fancy that. Hope you find something that suits you. The king, he's gone mad like the rest of them. Though perhaps he was mad in the first place. I can never tell with those eccentric royal oafs. It is the end of Great Boletaria as we know it. But hell, at least the demons don't send us to our deaths in battle. <laughs> One of my most memorable quotes in this game, I think. It's the end of Boletaria as we know it. Yeah, Patch's cost... Patch's price was 500. His patch... His price is 800. <laughs> He's... He is not a reasonable person to be buying items from. Just generally. Although he might be the only source for some of these things. Like, like I don't know if the Knight's Shield has dropped anywhere else. Using Stone Fang's hardened iron, it is heavier and stronger than a regular metal shield. I don't need anything from him, though. Generally. But it's an option. I can come back here and spend 800 each if I really want him, but I have to get the roll of his crap. Well, no, I can, I can go to one of the easier places to find him, probably. Hard times, eh? I'm sure you'll turn things around. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have killed you first for your damn prices. Keep the more reasonable priced people alive instead. You guys not aggroing on me anymore? By the time you get through all this, you're just so happy about the idea of getting to kill that damn fat guy that's just taunting you everywhere you go. That seems like a problem. <laughs> Hiding around a corner with a giant club is a really valid strategy. One might say that this is a massively overpowered build and that then you should and that you're like cheapening the game by doing it. To which I would respond, uh they put it in the game on purpose. Like it's not even hard to get, it's just there by the Dragon God, which is, which is required to get here. So you could argue that by being in in this zone, they expect you to have this, to potentially have this exact weapon, because you can only get this weapon by going through the, that other, the zone that has this weapon in it before you go to this zone. So presumably this zone is balanced for the kind of difficult, the kind of equipment you might have like this one. The real answer is that despite all rumors, Demon Souls just isn't that hard. It's a nice game. I love it. But, uh, its reputation that it originally had is, uh, odd, is actually funnily not always entirely accurate. Although you guys are, you guys will be seeing in the coming weeks Andrew's encounter with this game. And, uh, it's, uh, it's not an inaccurate rumor. It's not an in in inaccurate reputation either, because, uh, it's not easy. It's just that it can become very easy. And not even by grinding, because I, I I generally refuse to grind in these games if I can if I can avoid it. And this and this is me continuing to refuse to grind. Because this isn't grinding. I'm just doing quest interactions and NPC interactions and proceeding forward with the story. Ar and arguably there's a, an element of overleveling that happens if you never lose your souls, which is definitely one of the consequences of being better at these games is that you, you, you tend to not lose your souls at all. What's what you doing, buddy? You gonna try to escape? Oh, we tried to. Oh, okay. You noticed me. You didn't really plan for where to go next, huh? All your other places you went, you were like, I'm gonna escape during this cutscene and stuff, but this time around, you didn't really have a plan. But doing. Whoopee! This is what I think about all your backup. Oof. You deserve that, though. You know you did. Goodbye. How'd you know I was gonna go that way? Actually, no, I'm not gonna go that way. Uh, I think I can open that gate from behind. Let's go do that first.
but he gave me keys. An important ring of keys, an iron ring of keys. They all look the same. Thanks. <laughs> I was, you're kind of hurting my point when I said before that the game generally tells you where to use keys. If you just say, like, yeah, they look the same. Although it is, there are a much, bunch of locked stuff in this zone, and he just give you a ring of keys that all seem identical. It might suggest that, hey, all the keys, all the uh, locks around here are identical. So maybe you just got the, the, the keys to every lock in this zone. There's a reasonable interpretation of that information, perhaps. Claws. I like that every. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There might be little useful intel that make me notice that that's there. Oh, it's not a metal ball. It's a ball of straw, isn't it? That's why it's on fire. It's not like the metal balls from the first zone. You alright? Ooh, an item. Thanks for showing me that. You're a good guy, you know that? Wow, five more. I might need these for the two bosses of this zone. If I can get through the two bosses of this zone, then I'm good, and there's no more hard bosses. Nothing in Valley of Defilement is hard. The zone- the next zone of that area is harder than any of the bosses remaining in the game. But I'm... ...slightly worried about the two bosses that remain in this zone. Because I don't know. I have really outdated perceptions of their challenge. Ow. You guys are- You guys are gonna probably watch my first ever solo fight against Penetrator. Followed by my first ever solo fight against Allant. Because, uh, I'm probably going to kill Bior, who normally helps you with the Penetrator. And, uh, King Allant. Uh, I fought him with a summon in 2013. Just because I was... Which I do not regret, by the way. And then I fought him with magic the next year with Wanderbot. So that's... Did, actually, did he... But did, I, It might have been Wanderbot that fought him, actually. Hey there. Oopsie. Come here. Just stop that. Stop that. There we go. If you haven't yet, I recommend checking out the ending of my original Demon Souls playthrough. Because it's one of those... If you like multiplayer interactions, it's actually really fantastic. Because I was getting invaded... We were in the dragon area, and I was getting invaded. And I was also summoning help. And it was this ongoing chronicle of this one nasty invader, like, antagonizing my playthrough and making it hard to progress. While also, I kept summoning the same person over and over again, and I added them to my friends list, and I was, t like, sending them messages on the, over the PS3. And it was, and we were, like, we were talking back and forth, and I was summoning them, and we are like, we are like, we're gonna defeat this guy, damn it. Like, it was, if you like that kind of drama of, uh, of what NPC interactions can create for Dark Souls games, and which is arguably the entire point of the mechanic existing, then... That's captured forever, and I like that. It meant that I still haven't fought that boss solo yet, but I think the trade-off's pretty great, because it means I have this... this video... this video history of what I did there. Something I love about... ow, shit. Something I love about From Software is that they'll... they... I do like that they keep iterating on an idea, they'll keep... They'll stick to it, even if they tried it before. And they'll, they'll, they'll often refine the same thing. I like their new ideas a lot, too. But I also like it that sometimes they'll stick to something they've already done before and, and try to push forward with it. Because, like, they obviously want to have this drama and this interaction between, like, the invading... Like, the way that invasions and summoning allies works. Because they, the, they have all these layered covenants and they keep making it more complicated and interesting. People can invade you, you can you can summon people for invasions willingly, there are zones where people invade you automatically, there's a covenant that makes people automatically counter-invade you, which also works in the zone where people automatically invade you. So, like, I, in particular, I love the Dark Souls 3 zone where there's, a uh, Blades the Covenant invaders attacking you, but also your blue allies are coming in to help you, and there's, like, a whole army of players all fighting over with the, the fate of the host. So, like, I like that. Like... And I had I had an experience like that in that playthrough of Demon Souls back in 2013. But the real cool shit started happening in Dark Souls 3 when you get to the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant zone. 
and you have all of these allies all around you and all these enemies and you're having like a three on three gauntlet where it's just a giant fight over whether or not the, the human player that is the actual host of the match can survive until they reach the until they reach the next uh, the end of the zone. So some people hate it, but I will like I will make like hours of content sometimes when I get to that zone in that game and make no progress just because I, I love the experience so much. And I think it and I think it makes great stuff. It's also a fun opportunity to create scenarios that are unique to your playthrough as opposed to the standard I'm just walking forward, finding all the stuff and fighting the bosses that is like the standard playthrough. So that stuff's really that's, that stuff's neat, and I'm glad they stuck it out and kept iterating on the idea until they landed on that one. Because that was a fun place to be. Hey, you. Buddy. Found you. You. Oh, I just realized that you're not... Oh, okay. Thank you for rescuing me. There we go. I don't like... So this is a moment where I don't like how they handled... Interactions. I think there's moments in Souls games where the dialogue should not be skippable. I think that skippable dialogue makes sense when you are... Triggering the dialogue. But if it's somebody just in the environment yelling... Especially when the thing is to... You know, they're rushing you to press X on a thing. I don't like that they make it the dialogue skippable. This is the, this is at least the second time this playthrough where I've skipped a dialogue because I'm trying to do a thing, but the dialogue is the same button. And in this case, his life's on the line because he's getting attacked by two elite enemies, and he brings them to you, and it's a big threat, and he needs you to open the door so he can escape. That's the whole thing here. But you open the door pressing X, which skips his dialogue, but it's like, I want... They record a dialogue, they want you to listen to it, right? And I want to hear it, but I miss out on the dialogue. I'm like, oh, shit. Thankfully, this is my chance to... This is actually the zone where we can pick up, I believe, all of the remaining characters for the murder quest chain. Oh, that'll be a work in progress soon. Hey, buddy. You seem to have a knack for almost dying. You saved my life. This is the third time I am truly indebted to you. This is... all I have. But please accept it. Now. I must go. My father, the king, awaits me just over there. You're a clear stone. There's a relatively rare item, I believe. Is there an item back here? No. Nope. All right, so we've made the we made progress here. So the right, so following the same trajectory, actually, not trajectory. The, 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 they continue to follow the same pattern as it was set in the first zone, Boltaria Palace One One. The idea that you start in a place, you take side paths, you go to a bunch of crazy shit. But then, ultimately, you open a gate that's, like, right in front of the boss fight. There's a bit more to it this time. There's clearly a staircase covered in dudes. That's not a really a happy place, but you can see the boss gate right there. And there's the gate I opened, and just down the staircase is there was where we started. It's, it's something they actually... they specifically stop doing... They specifically don't do it in a... In the second zone, though, the dragon place, where you have a bunch of crap you have to go through in order to get back and forth, so... They're really back and forth and all over the place with their implementation, but... I mean, you don't want every zone to be literally the same. But it's appreciated. It's a clear gameplay conceit to deal with the fact that this game only lets you warp in at each boss fight location. And having to do this entire zone every time you do an attempt on the penetrator would be a nightmare. And they know that. Let's see, do I have the key for Bjor? Hey, Tower Night Room. Don't mind me. Sneaky, 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 sneaky. Uh oh. <laughs> I think he saw me, you guys. I'm still wearing the Thief's Ring, right? Yeah. I guess they're just more observant than the Cthulhu monsters that are so easily snuck up upon. Anyway. 
The big iron ring of keys. I hear sparklies. I can hear the sparklies all around me. I think they might be upstairs, though. No, I can hear them down here. Or not? I'm not altogether sure, honestly. What you gonna do? You gonna use that big weapon? You gonna use that big weapon on me? Oh, yeah. Hey, with the secondary attack. It works for once. Bloody iron key. Uh, this is a trap, isn't it? I think he, I think he like, tries to get me to fall off the cliff. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, that's a bummer. The tower shield. Oh, this was the spot that always blindsides me. Because the tower shield's like a billion pounds, right? This is the in, this is the this is the location I was talking about before. It's thirty pounds. <laughs> it's thirty pounds. I'm just at my cap right now. Right now. What a dick move. It's such a dick move. How how heavy it is. Like presumably you might want the tower shield, and it's like this mega item that comes out of nowhere. I would instantly improve this game by just deleting uh, item limits from the game completely. I would delete them for most games, though. Unless it's a game like Resident Evil 7, where your inventory management and what you choose to take with you, like Resident Evil 7 and Darkwood, is like a core mechanic that affects your survival chances. I think that it's actually a bad mechanic in most games. Like, I think every the way that every Dark Souls game doesn't care how big your inventory is after this point, I think that's an improvement on the franchise. I don't think that games are generally improved by having, uh, I think it's, I think it actually makes most games worse inventory limits of any, t of any kind, really. Like Dragon Age Inquisition, I think, had it, and I'm like, why? Dragon Age, Mass Effect, why? Why, why, why do I arbitrarily stop picking up items in Mass Effect 1 when I get, like, 300? Why? Just to enforce the really shitty, because everyone who's played Mass Effect hit that shitty moment eventually. Where they, where they pick up an item, it's like, you're out of items, would you like to turn this into Omni-Gel? And then you're like navigating your 5,000 item inventory, figuring out which stuff, which of these nearly identical items are you don't want anymore. And it's like, it's it's, it's just not, it's not a good gameplay mechanic. It's just, it, it, it doesn't benefit any element of the design. So I think that inventory limits should be removed from virtually every game ever made, basically. Except the ones where it actually benefits the design, like Darkwood and, you know, well, basically survival horror games. Or any game where your management of resources is actually the point, which is not the case in this game. Hey, Bjor. How you doing? You doing alright? Having a good time? I got all your armor. That was weird. Why did I, why did I get all your armor in that other place, but you're still alive? <laughs> Who goes there? Ah, you killed that vile insect and saved me. <laughs> I am called Bior, the elder of the twin fangs of Boletaria. I thank you. You deserve a handsome reward. Only I have none. <laughs> Go on ahead. I shall sleep a while. Oh, poor sweet Bior. You don't understand. You are my reward. <laughs> oh. What has possessed? You got a lot of armor. Do <laughs> you come out here where I can fight you? Look at Mr. Giant Sword over here. What the What has possessed you? I may be old, but I'm not frail. Ah, I feel bad. And I maxed out my inventory. Shit. 